Cheryl, we have some picks here that you're saying uh, for the financials people can look to ahead of the Fed meeting, but I'm not sure many people really want to get in front of this thing. Why should they? I think the way that we're really positioning and, and where we see the best relative value in banks um, is really in the regional and community bank space. And, and the rationale there is these are really your pure play spread-based lenders. Um, so they're making their money off the difference between loans and deposit costs. And with rates moving up, that's the purest play way to play that um, relative to some of the big banks that have more diversified models, have exposure to capital markets, which have clearly seen some volatility, and, and frankly, have more exposure to the consumer, which is one area where we do expect there could be some pressure on the lower income consumer. Right. I mean, some of the picks here that you like, Pinnacle, for instance, down 24 percent this year, Signature and SVB down 40 to 45 percent, a little different story there. South state's only down 5%. I mean, how do people find a South state versus a pinnacle? And, and in general, they might just say, you know what, I don't really need to get in now. I can just wait a few weeks or months maybe. Um, you really think prices are going to get away from them if they do that? I think we're seeing valuations kind of move towards trough levels for the banks. Um, what we've seen in sort of the, the types of names that we recommend are ones that have been higher, um, higher growth whether it's the, the geographical area they're in or by business strategy. A lot of these are serial acquirers, for example, um, and have a demonstrated track record. So I think there's a lot of upside to the fundamentals. But also, I think what we've been hearing recently at industry conferences is that banks are really focusing on protecting book value in this type of environment, too. So, for example, you're seeing a lot of um, the securities portfolio moving to held to maturity, so you don't have that mark-to-market volatility, and you sort of take that off the table, which I think was um, an unexpected surprise in first quarter that we're largely through um, looking ahead to second quarter earnings. So, so Cheryl, you describe these companies as classic spread-based uh, companies, meaning they they acquire uh, money at a cheap price and they lend it out at a higher price. Uh, a lot of people are are depositors who depend on on return off their savings. Is there any sign that banks like these will increase what they pay on deposits or for CDs? Or I, I think we're, we're. Yeah, I do think we are starting to see. Um, the, the quickest move will be on the online accounts. So names mm -hmm. like Ally, Capital One, that have an online presence, and that's where they really draw their deposit base. We've seen those rates move up um, quite significantly, um, somewhere around close to 1% now. So that's mm -hmm. been a, a pretty big move. CDs is also the other place where you'll see that move up more quickly. Um, and again, it, it depends on the mix, but... Um, you know, the types of names that we're looking at have more of a checking um, deposit base versus some of these higher cost products. Right. Interesting, though. So so if you're looking for a higher savings rate, you, you suggest looking at some of the online banks. So I have that right? That's that's correct. All yes. right. Cheryl, thanks very much. Cheryl Pate, we appreciate your time today.